Today we're going to talk about how thump kegs and reflux columns work, both of which will give you a higher proof alcohol. To understand how they work, we need to go back and do a little simple math. Water evaporates at 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. Ethanol evaporates at 173 degrees Fahrenheit or 78.37 degrees Celsius. On a side note, methanol and acetone, the bad alcohols, evaporate at lower temperatures of 148 degrees and 133 degrees Fahrenheit. This is why the bad alcohols are cut out first because they are the first to evaporate. This is what's called cutting out the heads. But that's a different topic. What we're going to learn is how to increase the proof of your finished product. Now as stated before, water evaporates at 212 and ethanol evaporates at 173. What does this mean? This also means that water condenses at a temperature lower than 212 degrees Fahrenheit and ethanol condenses at a temperature lower than 173 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you can lower the steam of your mash to a temperature between 173 degrees Fahrenheit to 211 degrees Fahrenheit, that means the water will condense first and the alcohol will stay in a gaseous state. A thump keg achieves this by passing the steam through some cooler liquid, allowing some of the steam to condense, but it has only a short way to travel, so it won't condense too much, and then it is allowed to go into your cooling coil. In modern times, a reflux column is often used to achieve the same effect. What this does is allows some of the heat from the steam to pass through the metal tubing and that also allows some of the liquid to condense. But it also stays relatively hot, so therefore more water will condense than alcohol. The water vapors are allowed to condense on the sides of the tube and run back into the cooking pot while allowing the alcohol steam to pass uncondensed through the reflux column and into your coil and into your collector giving you a higher proof alcohol. So what does all that mean? Well that means a lot. It means more than what people have been figuring out on other stills that you commonly see. When you typically see a reflux column, you see typically see a tube as big as you can get it. We'll use two of those. All right. You usually just take a tube as big as they can and as wide as they can, and they call that a reflux column. Well, what are they doing? Well, they're getting as much heat displacement in the air as possible. But why do that? It's this is not efficient. Why? Because you have this big opening in here. The steam is going to touch the wall of the reflux column. True. But that only accommodates for about this much. The rest of this, it acts like an insulator and it allows, it allows the steam to flow through the reflux column all the way up. But at the same time, you also need as many square inches of metal to cool in the air. But there's another way to do this. You go thinner and you attach cooling fins. Now this is just something that I made up just for demonstration. I'm not going to put it on my still, but it will work. Now, this is a little bit bigger than my coil. The reason that I wouldn't use this for reflux is this is just too thin. It's wide enough for a drop of water or alcohol or anything to pass through, but nothing else. That means water doesn't have enough room to drip down while the steam is going up. This is a little bit bigger, and it is just big enough to allow a drop of water to run down while the steam is going up. I would go just a little bit bigger than this. Like I said, this is just for demonstration. I would go with at least a 
quarter inch pipe, but maybe a half inch. I would go with at least maybe a half inch. You could probably go just a tad smaller, but not much. You don't need a two inch, you don't need three inch, you don't need four inch diameter. Just a half an inch diameter will work. And you don't need it tall. All you have to do is keep it cool. Now I've managed to solder on these cooling fins here. And these are just these are just some copper chips that I found on eBay. They're from China. They were real inexpensive and I managed to solder these on myself. And when doing these you don't really have to worry about using lead free solder but you can if you want because this is on the outside not on the inside so you really don't have any worries about that but if you want to use lead free solder go right ahead. Now what I've also done on here I've also attached a couple of aluminum plates what this will do, this will also help dissipate the heat into the air further. So if I had row after row of these attached with these, this would dissipate a lot of heat. If I could get a row here, a row here, a row here, and a row here, I would have almost as much cooling surface as this tube here. But the big difference is the steam all of the steam would have contact with metal and thereby you would have better condensation of your water. Now would you hook a thermostat up to this? Yes, this is the one thing I would hook a thermostat up to. Where would I put it? I would put it I would put it right here. Right here connected on to the tube itself. Not inside the tube. I don't want to measure the steam. I want to measure the heat that is on the tube because that's going to tell you exactly what the temperature is of the steam. How, how, much, how much heat is being drawn away or not drawn away. So if it gets too cold you'll know it. If it gets too hot, if it's still too hot you'll know. There are other things you could put on here to help dissipate the heat. Steel is solderable, so you could solder a piece of steel onto there instead of copper. You could also put that you could also put that on there and solder those on the ends of the fins. You could also put a cooling fan on there like so, just a little bit of wire and uh that would help that would help keep everything cool and the simplest thing that you could do to a reflux column to help it dissipate more heat would be to take uh, ordinary pop cans or beer cans or whatever cut out a good section of aluminum we'll use this aluminum foil as an example but the aluminum from cans would be quite a bit thicker and would work much better what you would do is you would take one sheet and you would put it on one side take the other sheet put it on the other side and then very close to the column put the two sheets together with a couple of uh, self-tapping screws and that would make the aluminum have contact with the column and that would be the simplest way to add more square inches to your reflux column and that would dissipate more heat and that's going to increase your proof. Another thing that you could do is that they have the reflux columns with the copper coil of cooling water and they want you to run it a specific way. They want you to run it to your condenser first so it can warm up a little bit and then run it to the reflux column so that it'll dissipate heat there and condense water. Well, one thing you can do is take your water cooling line and if you have these fins on here like that you could attach it to the outside just like that and it'll only allow so much heat to be dissipated. The heat has to go through here and it's pretty thin. There's not going to be a lot of heat. So if I were to connect this if I were to connect this side by side like this right there that would uh, surely dissipate nearly all the heat but by putting it on the ends of these 
that would be the perfect cooler right there. So let's have a little test. Here is a copper tube with cooling fins cooled by a household fan. Now, can this be considered a reflux column or a condenser? It can be considered to be either one. It all depends on which side the cook pot is on. If the cook pot was on the right side of this, it would be a condenser. If the cook pot was on the left side, with the steam traveling upwards, it would be a reflux. So let's expand this picture a little bit so you can better understand what I'm talking about. Now here we have one piece of copper with cooling fins on it and it's at both angles. Is it a reflux or is it a condenser? It's both. It doesn't matter which side the steam comes into. The steam comes in and it has to go uphill and would slowly be cooled and any condensation in there would be allowed to drip back into the still pot. It would then travel into the second half running downhill cooling the mixture further and that would condense into the final product running into your container. So let's try one more. Does this still have a reflux column or a thumb keg on it? It's a trick question. While the still does have a thump keg on it, if the thump keg were dry, being that everything is made out of copper, it would all act as a reflux column because it would allow heat to dissipate into the air, much as a reflux column would do. So you could run this thing dry. You could also put extra cooling fins all over the uh, thump keg and all over the head of the cook pot and it would act just like a reflux column does. So now I hope this teaches you a lot more about reflux columns and thumper kegs and I suspect that in the future having seen this information you're going to see a lot of changes in the future on reflux columns on stills that you can buy knowing this information now.